When I started my current job as a high school teacher, one of the things I had to do was um, generate a list of movies that I wanted to show. And I didn't really think about that. I just wrote a bunch of stuff down. And when I looked at the piece of paper on which I had generated this list, I was sort of surprised that, that Daniel Day-Lewis was, was, was in every single movie I had written down. And I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of surprising. So I ended up running a joke and having the uh, Daniel Day-Lewis Film Festival. Every year I would show Last of the Mohicans and The Crucible. And as movie, new movies came out, I would add them. And watching these movies over and over, I was sort of struck about the way in which um, Daniel Day-Lewis, at some level, always seems to play the same role. And I realized that that's an odd thing to say, especially in the context of Daniel Day-Lewis, who is sort of famous for you know, the variety of roles he plays and the intensity with which he plays them. But he always plays a, a man on the margins, um, always a man who actually surprisingly like John Wayne, who is in a society where he can't quite fit into and it can't quite contain him, and he's always sort of looking for a way out. In that regard, he's a little bit like a frontiersman, which makes a lot of sense in a movie like Last of the Mohicans, but he's also in a weird way a frontiersman even in a movie like The Crucible, where he plays a Puritan. And he's even kind of a frontiersman when he's a gang leader on a New York street in the Age of Innocence. And he's even kind of a frontiersman when he's a lawyer in, in New York, not quite fitting into the society in which he belongs, uh, constantly straining to find its perimeter. And so um, I got really intrigued by this and began to try to trace the through line here. And, um, and that got me thinking about other people. You know, got me thinking about um, you know, Denzel Washington's relations be between fathers and sons. And it got me thinking about Meryl Streep's relationship to feminism. And what I'm interested in in these people is the way in which there is a surprising vision of history embedded in their body of work. And here I have to say that there's nothing special about movie stars in that regard. I think all of us are walking around with a, with a version of history inside of our heads. All of us, you know, believe at some level in our bones things like you can't fight City Hall. Or they think that history is about, um, you know, cycles. Or they think that it's about progress. Most of the time, we're not in a position to um, act on or reveal our visions of history. Every once in a while it comes out in the way where we choose to live or how we educate our children. What's interesting about movie stars is that um, they live their lives in a really public way and the difference between stars and actors is that they have a lot of choice and power and control over the roles that they take. And so in that regard they're a little bit to me like say a mollusk is to a scientist. That, they, that, that you, by looking at these mollusks you can sort of see things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see in other species. And what you see here um, is, um, is their sense of time. You know, the time is like a, a dye that you inject into these movie stars. And in looking at their body of work, you can suddenly see a version of a story which is interesting not because they're special people, but because in some ways there's lots of other people who may feel similarly to the way that they do. And I want to sort of get at that, and that's why I wanted to sort of tell these stories.